For this project I want to make a device which I can remap uh, the fuel um, mixture of an ECU uh, without actually modifying the ECU at all or, or touching it. Um, so what I want to do is make a device which, I'm gonna, uh, which has a microcontroller on it and it sits in between the fuel injectors, so here's an example fuel injector, uh, and the actual uh, ECU itself uh, and the microcontroller will see what signals are going to the uh, fuel injectors and then modify them according to a user map which is um, programmed into the microcontroller itself and in order to program my controller uh, with the fuel map I'm going to use uh, a serial interface uh, which I'll go to uh, an existing project which I've already made so I've made um, a project previously in a previous video which is an OBD um, device uh, which is like touchscreen device. Uh, of course, I'm not going to be using OBD on this um, particular project because it's not going to actually communicate with the ECU itself. But I can use the touchscreen device to um, use a serial line on there uh, to program this device because the serial line I'm using on the OBD device to, to communicate with an ELM chip using uh, serial communication. So the software um, is already started, uh, is a good starting point to use the OBD software. Uh, so the four, so I've got four cylinder engines. So the four injectors on the engine are already in there, and they've got this type of connector on them, which is an EV1 connector, which is a fairly common connector. Um, and I've got some connectors off of eBay. So you can get for seven pounds, you can get ten of these. So you get get them in pairs. So this is a connector which goes onto the uh, fuel injector itself, uh, and then you get. The other connector as well which is which is like the like the connector on the fuel injector so they, these would connect to each other but this allows me to intercept the signal going from the ECU uh, in into the fuel injector uh, and that allow me to hopefully first of all um, monitor uh, the signals and see how see the shape of the signals and, and decide from the shape of the signals how to write the rest of the software to actually then modify the signals uh, to, to produce a map and the the microcontroller that will this is a real-time device so all, all it, it's going to concentrate on doing is looking at the signals um, remapping them to, as uh, to the map that's been uploaded uh, but I'll also be able to monitor what's, what, what's going on because it, it can then communicate as a lower priority down the serial line um, what, what the signals it's finding so I'll be able to display the signals on a device and displayed various graphing uh, using using that device. So there's a few types of tuning uh, that I want to do on the fuel system. Um, so first of all, just a basic um, mapping for a car for a production car. They probably tune it more towards economy than than performance, and so you might might be able to get a bit of a, a gain in performance just by remapping the existing fuel mapping. Uh, and then over above that you can use high octane fuel so on forced induction cars such as uh, turbo cars or supercharged cars uh, you, if you use a higher octane fuel it means you can um, make more make more um, out of the tuning itself so if you lo use low octane fuel on forced induction then you, you can get into this um, um, detonation um, if you if you try and push the tuning too too far uh, and that can destroy the engine, but it gives you more you know, higher octane fuel, allows you to tune its uh, forced induction car a bit better. Um, and then um, the next thing, of course, is is to you you can put higher higher capacity injectors in. So this is a 440 cc per minute injector. The ones I think in my car are about 360 cc per minute. Uh, so if you want to do that, then you need to shift. The Hulk. So if this is, uh, as an example, I, I don't, I haven't worked out uh, how much percentage it, greater it is than the ones in my car. But if, if say it was a twenty percent greater flow rate than the ones in the car, then you want to f shift the whole fuel mapping down by twenty percent to start with as a starting point. Otherwise, it's going to be twenty percent richer uh, the fuel, and it'll just flood the engine. So when you put in um, higher capacity. Uh, injectors into a car you really want to um, be able to sh um, reduce the flow rate to start with um, to give you a chance to, to actually start the car to tune it 
Uh, and then the next thing to, um, would be if you one of the common uh, tuning things for a, a car is to um, put a performance cam in. So if I try and roughly draw a kind of a cam lobe kind of shape, um, just use, use some coins to to draw this. So if this is a, a rough kind of approximation of a kind of cam lobe and so at the back of the cam it's clear of uh, the valves so it doesn't actually uh, so it won't actually lift the lift the um the valves at all uh, but then as the cam comes around it starts lifting the the valve say at this point and it'll drop the valve again at this point and the maximum height it will lift it by is, is whatever this this point here is if you put a performance cam in, then you get more like this kind of shape. So it actually starts opening the valve earlier and closing it later, and it lifts it a bit higher. But when it does that, it throws the the tune of the um, car off uh, because if you if you've got just the standard flow of the fuel in there, uh, and actually it's open for longer and open for wider then actually more air will get into the engine and you'll get a weaker weaker mixture. So you want to be able to uh, rich and if you want to put a, cam, a performance cam in your car, you want to um, actually be able to rich the mixture up and, and also over the rev range of the car. So this will be not much different at the low rev range, but when you get into high rev ranges and, um, and the flow of the air is much higher, then it will actually affect the performance a lot more in the higher higher range of the uh, the, the RPM. Uh, so you want to actually tune it more in the upper upper rev range than it is than you have in the down, lower rev, rev range. So it actually changes your mapping across across the rev range of the car. So you need to be able to do that as well. So th these are the, the the three kind of standard tuning things which uh, I want to be able to perform uh, with this device. So I've had a thought about the software, and there's um, three modes of operation which I, I've come up with um, initially um, for the for initial sort of uh, de uh, definition of the software and the first mode is pass through so um, where the signal going into the fuel injector is just passed straight through to the output and it performs exactly like the uh, ECU would perform if the device wasn't there and that would allow me to monitor the signals which are going through and and decide on how the uh, the actual injectors are working on this particular ECU because it may vary from ECU to ECU uh, and then f with those with that information I could then uh, put a plan forward to how to implement the next mode which is the uh, which is the mapping mode so how to actually convert the signal from the ECU signal into the remap signal um, and there's a couple of things that I, I need to do um, for, for doing that conversion um, so the, f um, the first thing is I need to be able to make the the period longer so if in the case of the camshaft uh, because it's the ports open for longer I need to take the input signal and make it say 1% wider or 0.05% or 0.02% wide a longer duration of the fuel being on to allow for rich mixture and the other thing about the camshaft is um, because the port opens earlier you need to actually shift the start on the opening point of the injector earlier which is um, a tough thing to do, but should, can, can be done. Uh, so that actually it, it opens before the, you get the signal, uh, so, uh, like a, a millisecond, maybe a two milliseconds. I'm not sure until I, uh, until I monitor the signals exactly how, what kind of time difference it needs to be um, opening early or potentially opening late, depending on the profile of the cam or, or, what, or how you need to tune the engine. And then uh, the third mode, uh, it's just like a, a gimmicky kind of mode, but might as well put it in there uh, as it can be put in there, is that you can actually disable the fuel injectors. So in other words, you could actually have a, um, a switch or s some kind of method in the car of telling the device to go into a mobilized mode. Because if you go into a mobilized mode, then the device won't let the car start because you can actually um, prevent it from providing any fuel to the engine. So on the touchscreen device, um, I'm going to uh, probably have about four or five uh, tabs on the displays as to the kind of things that it can do. On the first tab, what I want to do is, is have some kind of 
way of showing that like the waveforms of the injectors uh, so you'd have one per per cylinder and i don't know this, this is just a random waveforms but just to, to kind of show the kind of display that you get and then there'd be a f like a fourth one um and also you be, should be able to display rpm because if you're getting an injector signal for every well it's like every second rpm because it, it's like um a four stroke so um on the up and down of the first stroke you take uh you take um air in and then you compress it and then on the next stroke you ignite it and then exhaust um so you'd have to um probably uh, multiply by two to get the rpm or something but until i get the signals i don't don't really know how how it goes but you you probably want to display things like rpm on on here as well and there's other things you could display as well but and to be able to capture data i then analyze it uh, before going to the next phase which would be to actually like uh on the next tab i want to be able to against rpm and the rate of change of uh of rpm i'd want to be able to draw um a kind of torque kind of curve because i don't know um so if, if i'm running this on a road and and measuring acceleration so you get a curve like a torque curve uh but because you don't know the the resistance of the road and like depends on the incline of the road and things you see it's a bit difficult to convert it into actual torque figures but it should be able to get a, uh, a like an equivalent torque curve and um and kind of our, uh, power curve uh, brake horse power kind of curve as well so i want to be able to do that uh, and i want to be able to measure like twice so you can do the the like a, put it into pass through mode measure what the ecu does and then put it into mapping mode and then see how the performance uh, in, improves or maybe maybe it makes the performance worse and you can see if it's getting better or worse depending on your tuning uh, so that would be the second screen uh, and kind of the the whole point of the, the device uh, and then uh, i want to be I'll, i'd probably want a screen where i can review data so data that's been collected here I, i'll be able to load up uh, like the curves and i'll be able to load up different ones depending on the ones which have been saved and so i can get i can do compare to two different runs um and in in these um graphs you better uh, display also um some useful information such as between the two car curves you'll be able to say average increase power increase is uh like five percent or something like that uh, or you'd be able to say, uh, as well as average, you'd be able to say the maximum increase. So wherever it's the biggest gap, you'd be able to say that was maybe 10%. So maybe overall you get a 5% increase across your both range. Uh, and But at the peak point, you get like a 10% increase of power. Uh, so you, uh, displaying statistics like that to help um, tune in the, the vehicle as well. And then on, on the fourth screen, uh, and there might be other, other display, other, other screens, tabs that I would want to put as well. Uh, so, oops. Uh, on the fourth one, uh, like the actual tuning, so I'd have uh, maybe bars every every hundred RPM. You'd have like a bar, and you could either do plus or minus five percent. I think I'd I'd do it in percentages. Uh, so fuel in, so maybe to two decimal places. I don't know, point zero zero nine percent plus uh, or minus zero point one percent or something like that so for each 100 rpm range so zero to 100 rpm 100 to 200 200 to 300 you could actually map the fuel as a positive or negative um mapping uh and also uh you'd be able to do the the um pre pre-inject as well so for the for the cam uh, where you want to advance the injection for what the engine would normally inject so there'd be a mapping for that as well uh, which i don't know how it display be displayed on the graph as well uh, so you can uh, have your mapping you get to save that to disk uh, because it's on um so sort of like handheld tablet in the in the car so this is not part of the actual ec uh, not part of the microcontroller so the microcontroller literally just does one task uh, but all of this information all of this stuff is on application on a tablet um uh, and you could save the mappings, you could load old mappings, you could uh, have mappings for maybe standard fuel, mappings for like high high octane fuel, mappings for different you know different 
configurations of camshafts or or um you know pulleys for the for the supercharger that kind of thing um and and then you can keep a history of that kind of thing as well so this is my obd2 project which you can see in previous videos i've uh, written i've done a lot of videos showing you how it's technically put together and uh, the software and the software is open source as well um but for, for this particular project i'll use it as a starting point because it's got a load of graphic stuff which i've already programmed in uh, and it's got it communicates using serial interface so that codes are there as well which i can make use of and the tabs as well so i go through different tabs and it has different features so that codes in there and also if you take a look at this one where i can add little uh graphics on it's got like a, a drag and drop interface as well which is all, all, all in there already as well so and it's got pdf report so i can i'll be able to produce hopefully pdf reports of the tuning and the mapping and things um uh, and so it gives me a good starting point for the actual application software and the device itself because it's a portable touchscreen i can use that in the car um, so i'll make use of this so that's the plan uh, this is a kind of draft circuit which i'll put together for the microcontroller um, in my next video i'll go through um, how this is all designed and put together the circuit may be different by then because uh, i've got to start writing the software for the my controller the first wave of software won't really be to do with actually getting it going on a car it'll be to do with checking that the circuit works functionally correctly it can actually perform at the rate i need it to perform uh, and just get the communication going between the uh, tablet device uh, and the my controller over the sealed serial, serial, serial um, line so the next video will basically describe the circuit how it works and just show how, how i'm doing the initial tests to verify the circuit is, is valid for the project